Okay guys, welcome back. Let's see what time. Okay, it's 2.51. Yeah, welcome back. Um, I think in the previous video I said we're doing requirement three. I lied. It's I, I said we're doing requirement four. We're actually doing requirement three. So, what are you supposed to do for requirement three of spiritual discovery? If you watched last week's video, then you already know. Basically, you need to read the Gospels. Um, and John. Obviously, I cannot come on here and read the Gospels to you, so it'll be a lot of you guys um, reading it. Again, there'll be another assignment attached to that, just to make sure that you're actually reading it. Um, so here's how the assignment is going to work. Um, I think Luke, I want to say has 24 chapters. Yeah. Luke has about 20, 24 chapters somewhere there. And then John, I think, has a few less. So, huh. so here's what we're going to do. For each, for each of the books, that's Luke and John, right? Um, I want each of you, the explorers, to write down seven things you learned or seven things that interested you or seven things that shocked you it could be seven questions um that you got from luke and then do the same for john i'm not going to attach a due date to this assignment yet but please know that it is there in the background um yeah please make sure that you not get your seven pieces of information like from luke one luke two luke three no spread it out so let's say um luke one i liked this 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 luke six i like this 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 so make sure you spread it out um throughout the books but that will be the mode of assessment for this requirement um so, but for today's lesson, we are going to have a quick discussion, or rather I'm going to discuss it with myself, I guess, and you're going to watch me discuss, um, on a few of the passages that you will find um, when reading, when reading these texts. So the first passage that we are going to discuss is Luke chapter 11, verse 9 to 13. Um, it might sound foreign when I tell you like, oh, it's Luke 11, 9 to 13. But when I start reading it, it'll become very familiar. You know, the thing with the Gospels is it's like four different people's accounts of the same, the same events, more or less. So in Matthew, Matthew 7, verse 7, which is probably the one that you guys know, ask and it shall be given to you, seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. Luke, Luke a bit differently. Well, not really, but kind of. Um, so that's the one that we are going to be focusing on first. Luke 11, verse 9 to 13. As always, I think for this class, let the standard edition be New King James Version. Of course, if you do not have one at home, that's fine too. Um, so Luke 11, verse 9 to 13. So I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door will be opened unto you. For everyone who asks will receive, and he who seeks will find, and to him who knocks it will be opened. Verse 11, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? That's very deep. <laughs> or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father Give the gifts of the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. All right. I hope we're following. Um, if you want to, you know, as you're following along, jot down some notes. You can end up using this for your seven, seven things you learned. You know, you can have a little bit of leakage. So, what do we learn from this test? This text. <laughs> um, obviously... There are three things, right? We learn to ask things of Christ, we learn to seek, and we learn to knock. Now, um, <laughs> my focus, I think, first will be from verse 11, right? 
And verse 11 says, if a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Yada, yada, yada. If you ask for a fish, will your dad give you a serpent or a snake? The answer to that is no. That's not going to happen. And why won't that happen? Because our fathers love us. Um, our parents, our guardians, they want the best for us. So that's how it should be anyway. So if our parents cannot do that, what makes you think um, God can, right? Um, as humans, our nature is to sin. You know, ever since the fall of man, that has been what is inherent um any goodness you see in a human that's that's an act of god so it's kind of it's kind of like our memory gem was saying right um the glory of man is like the flowers that fall away excuse me that's what is being said here kind of but that's what it's to here um that in our sinfulness we cannot do this how much more the one who is perfect? You know, in our sinfulness, our sinfulness, okay, through our sinfulness, in the midst of our sinfulness, um, we are able to do good acts, okay? These are things that will fall away. These are, you know, we might think we're doing our able best, and we may be doing that. Um, but in comparison to the Savior, guys, <laughs> it it kind of pales it's not it's it's not comparable um i like to think of it like our goodness is a drop in the ocean like it's a single it's a single water droplet god's goodness is the ocean itself okay so it's it's like juice okay it's like pure fruit juice god is the apple okay he's the orange he's he's the mango and, you know, we go through a process of being refined, of being squeezed, maybe we're diluted with water, people add sugar. So by the time you get the juice, I mean, it's not the same as the fruit. I mean, it still might be good, but it's not the same as the fruit. You know, it's kind of like that. So if we as humans are the juice and we can do that, trust and believe that he who is the fruit, who is the main source, can do so 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 um can do so much more um so sometimes as we grow we begin to lose sight of how big god is um you know that's why it's good to be like you guys because you guys have bounds and bounds of faith um cling to that forever and ever and ever and know that whenever you are lacking um, whenever you feel like, let's say you've been given to preach, um, it's Pathfinder Week of Prayer, you've been given to preach, and you, you just don't think you can do it, you know? Whenever you ask in God's name, whenever you seek Him, um, whenever you knock on the door of His heart, first of all, His heart is open to you always, but whenever you knock on the door of His heart, trust and believe that God is a good God, and He will show up for you so that whatever you ask, you will receive. Whatever you seek, you will find, and whatever you, whenever you knock, um, the door will be open to you. God wants, God wants good things for us. Yeah. Um, how are we gonna do this? Okay, let's move to our next text. That is John chapter fifteen, verse five through eight. John chapter fifteen, verse five through eight. Okay, and this one. Let's see if we can do this one in like a, a few minutes. This one is kind of similar to the previous one a little bit. Um, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit away and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes or he, he tends, he whatevers, um, so that it might bear more fruit. You are already clean. Oh, you guys, I'm sorry. I started from verse 1. I was supposed to start from verse 5. So, from verse 5. Um, I am the vine, and you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. 
and they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. So when I, when I read this text, I know it's a bit long. Don't worry. It gets longer. <laughs> when I read, when I read this, the thing that pops out at me is God is the source. I don't know. There's some t-shirts um, that have that design, God is the source. That is what I, I hear whenever I hear this text, right? Have you ever seen a branch that is living without being connected to a tree? You know, like, like a mango tree, right? When the branch is on the mango tree, it's like, it's flexible, it moves. If you peel it, you'll see that there's, you know, there's green, there's green stuff there, meaning it's alive. Um, but what happens when the tree, when the tree falls down, uh, when the branch falls down, the, it becomes dry, it becomes brittle, it becomes broken, it's only good for firewood, right? So similar to that, without Christ, we cannot exist in the way that we are um, supposed to. He is our life giver. So <laughs> it's very funny, eh? Whatever we do, um, in the previous text, we said any act of goodness that's within us, it comes from Christ, right? Even when we sin, okay? Pay attention. <laughs> Even when we sin, like let's say someone comes and says, uh, no, did you eat my, did you eat my piece of pizza? Yeah. And then you, who knows deep inside your heart that you ate that person's pizza, what are you going to say? You say no. The same breath you are using to lie <laughs> is the same breath that God gave you. When you reached out your hand to steal that thing, it was with the vital force um, that God gave to you, okay? So, what if we took that energy? What if we took that life that Christ gives and we turn it um, for good, okay? So when we turn to Christ, when we give our life to Christ in that manner, trust and believe we will be fruitful and we will bless, and we'll be blessed. Um, verse seven says, if we abide in him, our will will align with his. This is actually very important, especially considering the last verse that we said, um, ask, seek, knock, and God will what is it give you you'll find it you, you know what i mean you know when it says ask it doesn't mean ask from anyone maybe you've heard people praying and i'm uh, from anywhere maybe you've heard people praying and they'll say um let your will be done you know because god god is not going to give you what is what is not good for you god ultimately wants the best for um for us and it can kind of be hard to know what god wants from us when this verse tells us that if we abide in him if we say if we kneel down to pray and say jesus christ live in me abide in me help me to do your will we can trust and believe that even when we pray we are praying um, according to his will and that he will live in us and we as the branches of his big tree um, will have life forever. Um, without him, you can do nothing. But with him, as it says in Philippians 4 verse 13, we can do all things. Um, this is the end of this part. I will be back shortly with part two and the last verse.